Smart was a 19-year-old college freshman at Cal Poly St. Louis Obispo when she vanished in May of 1996. She was last seen leaving a party with two other students. Kristen's disappearance has remained a mystery. Search warrants were executed in February of 2020, 24 years after she went missing. Police searched the home of Paul Flores, one of the students Kristen was last seen with. Also searched were his parents' home in Arroyo Grande, California, and property in Washington State. Then police went back to look at Flores' home again. The searches appeared to be the break the Smart family had been waiting decades for. After years of calling Paul Flores a prime suspect, police finally arrested him for murder. His father, Ruben, arrested as an accessory to murder. Paul and Ruben Flores were arrested after investigators found biological evidence under Ruben's deck behind his home. According to the AP, there were traces of human blood and stains in the soil. The Smart family filed a lawsuit last April against Ruben Flores for severe emotional distress spanning nearly 25 years. It alleges Ruben relocated Smart's remains with the help of Paul's mother, Susan Flores, and her boyfriend, Mike McConville. Despite all of this, Smart's body has yet to be found. Kristen was pronounced legally dead in 2002. The distance between the last place she was seen alive and the door to her dorm building at Muir Hall is just about 40 yards. That's the voice of Chris Lambert on his podcast in your own backyard. It's a deep dive into Kristen's disappearance. The podcast renewed interest in the case and put pressure on authorities to solve it. You usually start with the last person to see the missing person, and it never got beyond that point. It was like everybody they would look into, it was like, led them back to Paul Flores again. The trial for Paul Flores and his father, Ruben, began July 18th, 2022. They were tried together, but with separate juries. The Kristen Smart murder trial continued today with testimonies from former Cal Poly students who interacted with Kristen at the party she was at. The trial lasting four long months, and then the jury came back with its verdict. Paul guilty of murder, Reuben not guilty of accessory to murder. For more than two decades, the story of Kristen Smart has touched us all. The story of her enthusiastic spirit, her experience as a college student at Cal Poly, her wonderful family. And today we have finally achieved justice for Kristen. And today was the true justice day. And, and the, the day I refer to as the true justice day is when the convicted killer gets sentenced. And that happened. Let's take a look. For 25 years, you have lived free in the community, while Kristen's family has lived a nightmare. Your continued predatory behavior in the years that you were free, sexually assaulting women who were either drugged or intoxicated to the point where they could not consent. This predatory behavior has spanned your adult life. It is necessary to remove you from society so that you can no longer prey on and victimize women. You deserve to spend every day you have left behind bars. You are committed to the Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation as to count one, a violation of Penal Code Section 187A, murder in the first degree, to the maximum sentence that I can impose by law, an indeterminate term of 25 years to life. Indeterminate term, 25 years to life. We've got to figure out what that actually means. Let's bring back in our think tank, Renee Hill, Carmen Rowe, Brian Watkins with us. Brian, you're in California. What does that mean, indeterminate term, 25 years to life? Does that mean this guy has a chance of getting out? Because he's not that old. He's going to get out, and with the criminal justice reform that's moving on in California, 25 years doesn't even mean 25 years anymore. 25 years, years to life used to mean that you were eligible for parole after doing 25 years. That doesn't mean that you would get parole and they can continue to deny you parole up until the end of your life. However, now it went down to, they get 33% off the 25 years. So now they have to do pretty much like 15 years and they're eligible for parole. So he can do 15 years with good behavior, be out. What's going on? That's California on? criminal justice, California criminal justice reform. Why, how is that reform, letting 
killers go. Uh, uh, Carmen, I don't understand this. <laughs> I don't like they, re reform is like okay, people who are innocent, we don't prosecute them. People who are are being held before uh, before trial on very low level, low low nonviolent, low 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 level crimes, we don't <laughs> we don't incarcerate them. We let them sign out on a, on a bond or whatever. Um, Letting murderers go after like 15 years? That's reform? What are we reforming here? <laughs> Vinny, I am in Houston, Texas. Here in Texas, we put people in prison and we leave them there for a long time. And a case like this is a life case here. And it could be a death case. I mean, so yeah, we don't do the same things they do in California. But it's very concerning to think that this guy could ever walk the streets again. I mean, from all we've heard and seen, he's a scary, scary guy. So it's really troubling to think that California would release him at any time uh, in the next 25 years or life. I mean, 15 years is kind of, that's a slap in the face to this this victim's family, no question. Yeah, Renee, why, why does reform always involve like, it, it always trickles into where it shouldn't go. Like it, it goes into places where dangerous people harm innocent people. It, it, it like reform means like, wrongfully accused, wrongfully convicted, you know, people who have done things that aren't super serious get a second chance, I get it. But like, first degree murder? Yeah, Vinny, you know what, unfortunately, with, with the good comes the bad, because there are people and, and situations where reform is certainly needed, because it has impacted either communities or, or, you know, certain people uh, in such a negative way that reform is, is quite necessary. But along with that, there are going to be, you know, essentially the bad apples that may redeem uh, some benefits from this as well. But again, remember, this person is not guaranteed to come home. He's going to have to go before a parole board. There's going to be a hearing. But why should he Family go before the parole board? will be allowed to, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, listen, why? Because everybody has rights. And why? Because the legislature right? have put these things in place. <laughs> they... And so we all have to follow the rules. You know, Brian, we Brian, we need, to, we need to go out to California, Brian. We we need to get all the people that signed this into law, right? This so-called reform, and and show them and and have them meet uh, Kristen Smart's family, um, have them listen to the facts of this case, and and let them know that the little piece of paper that they sign is going to give this guy an opportunity to perhaps get out uh, as a free man. And what you're telling me, it will likely happen. It's, it's crazy, Brian. That makes no sense to me whatsoever. Why is every correction an overcorrection, right? Like, you, like doesn't Lady Justice kind of like balance things a little bit? Why do we always go yeah. all one way? Oh, that's wrong, so we got to go all the way back the other way. Why, Brian? I need an answer. You know, the, the problem is, is that the criminal justice reform movement and the people behind that are not being honest with the public. And when they say like, oh, people are being held without bail for these little minor crimes, that's just simply not the truth. They have probation violations because they've committed other crimes. People who do petty crimes already get a slap on the wrist, get out without bail. But when they say, oh, bail, we need bail reform, they're letting out violent people. Most people who were let out when the bail reform movement passed California re-offended and were re-incarcerated. So, you know, it's it's they're being the public is being misled of what what's really going on and who really benefits from this type of stuff. If you do a petty theft here, you don't have to pay bail. You're not going to jail for life, no matter what. But you know, when you do the criminal justice reform, it's people like this that really really benefit. Yeah, thanks for giving us the truth, Brian. I appreciate because you're in the trenches. I mean, you're there. You're doing this day in day, day out. Absolutely. All right.